Greetings, everyone. I've been hearing some chatter about Batman Arkham Knight recently, mostly about the supposed problems in the story. I think the story holds up very strongly, and most of the criticisms I've seen are really missing the mark. Shout out to League Entertainment for coming up with lots of good counter-arguments to the criticisms. Check their stuff out. There's a video out there breaking down the story by Godzilla Mendoza which has common criticisms that are often cited for why the story is bad. I do want to preface that the video was made seven years ago. He was a younger man back then, so he's not going to agree with every last point he makes, or the way he presented himself, so let's not be hard on him about it. And I've also seen this comment, which at least establishes he agrees with a good portion of his points, so I think it would be interesting to see if this video can change his mind, even slightly. Let's get on with it. So Joker is the villain of the first game, is basically the villain of the second game, then shows up and steals the spotlight as the villain in the third game, and then in the fourth game, he's... the main villain. Even after he died? He's not the main villain. He's a hallucination created by Scarecrow's fear toxin. The actual main villain of the game. Not to mention, his entire existence as an imaginary friend for Bruce seems to be just because. Batman gets a dose of Scarecrow's fear toxin, and instead of putting him into a nightmarish drug trip wonderland, like it always does, it makes him manifest the Joker as an alternate personality. Yeah, because it's a different type of fear toxin than we saw in Arkham Asylum. The revised formula works perfectly. It passes through clothing and is readily absorbed through the skin and eyes. Gas masks are useless. The results are horrifying. If there was any way to have all the tension in a scene disappear instantly, it would be to have Mark Hamill's Joker voice coming out of Batman's mouth. That's actually quite terrifying, since the Joker is meant to be an intimidating villain, and the Joker having the resources and skills Batman has is a terrifying reality. If anything, that makes the audience afraid of what Batman will become. The B-plot of the game decides to offer an additional reason for him being there, and that's because Batman is slowly turning into the Joker. You're the last Joker. Why? Because fuck consistency! Joker was dying in Arkham City because he pumped himself full of the Titan formula and to turn him into this. I'm no doctor, but I can tell you whatever chemicals used to make a person into that are not exactly going to be the healthiest things to have in your blood. So Joker is a mangled mess after the superroids because his ribs are literally hanging out of him, and he decides to donate a ton of his poisoned blood to both Batman and Gotham's hospitals. The Titan formula was what made him and Batman so sickly. Not just that it was Joker's blood. In fact, Joker's blood should be fine on its own. But it's not just Joker's blood that people are dealing with. It's the Joker's blood alongside its exposure to Titan. Aside from his looks, he's just a human being. The chemicals at the factory changed his skin pigment and hair color when he fell in. It's not like he was bitten by a radioactive clown. So Arkham Knight, the game, informs us that for no reason at all, Joker's blood is now making a few random people turn into him. Five people were affected. Untreated, the blood's gestated too long. It's altering them. It's a form of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, but mutated beyond anything on medical record. This is a real disease, by the way, which leads to personality changes. Considering we're working with Titan, a fictional formula, the writers are free to make their own rules for how this affects people, and nothing contradictory has been shown by the mere establishing of these rules. Let's also not forget about when this happened in Arkham City. think about that for a second. Joker's entire personality and complexion can be recreated by a botched blood transfusion? No. That's not what the game is saying. If that was the case, we'd see literal clones of the Joker. Gee, that kind of undermines the whole one bad day thing if it's all based on genetics. No. That undermines the entire appeal of the Joker as a character if he can be just duplicated that easily. No. Does that mean that Joker's mental problems aren't real and are just a side effect of the chemicals? No. If the toxic blood gives you mental problems, why is it so specific as to make you an angry anarchist who wants to murder and or sleep with Batman? 
because it was taken from Joker's blood specifically, and while I understand that the Joker's blood on its own wouldn't result in the disease, the game didn't say that. It was its mixture with the Titan formula that made it possible. That's the establishing rule here. Why did the poison in the Titan formula not kill these people as opposed to the hundreds that it did kill? Because Joker's blood mutated into something else. Joker died before there was even a chance for him to experience any kind of mutations. And he died first due to being the first one exposed to the poison. After his death, his blood that he shipped to other hospitals would still be developing over time, to the point where its side effects would change too. Before it killed him, Joker sent his infected blood out to all the hospitals in the state. I know, we tracked it all down. We missed some. Hospital errors are entirely possible, especially in Gotham City. If Batman drank the cure that is literally made from the Fountain of Youth, would that not just mean he's fine? Why doesn't that work anymore? Because he was exposed to Crane's fear toxin, which is implied to have Titan in it. This is evident by Crane taking Titan by the end of Arkham Asylum, and acquiring Titan in Arkham City. Scarecrow has been planning this for a while, and it's also worth noting that Titan amplifies whatever it's being exposed to. At the end of the game, when Batman conquers his fears of becoming the Joker, did that somehow magically cure him of turning white and green? Batman doesn't have the Joker disease. He only starts to experience side effects when exposed to Crane's toxin. So it makes sense that once Batman isn't afraid anymore, he can overcome the effects of the fear toxin. Arkham Asylum showed this too. I know Robin states that Batman is the fifth Joker upon seeing his eyes turn green. But again, this is after Batman was already exposed to the fear toxin that has Titan in it which is known to turn people's eyes green. Additionally, the color of your eyes can be affected by what's being seen under fear toxin. Crane saw Batman in a fiery looking environment, so his eyes turned orange to correlate with that. Batman is being pushed by the Joker to kill, so his eyes turn green to match Joker's energy. Even if he beat the mental aspects of this stupid disease, won't he still have to deal with the physical aspects of- You know what, never mind. Batman is being affected by the fear toxin, which solely causes mental side effects. Gee, I need to figure out where they could possibly be producing factory-sized quantities of this dangerous chemical. Oh look, this spy plane and scanner equipment told me it's the local chemical factory. World's greatest detective, everyone! By the way, Ace Chemicals has more than one location. Arkham City showed us this, which we can see out of the map of this game. I also don't know why we'd assume there's only one chemical factory in a big city. And it's not like Batman ignored the possibility. He relied on Gordon and his men looking into it, while Batman focuses his priorities on trying to get the city safely evacuated and investigating what he can to locate Scarecrow's bomb. I've traced the fear toxin to Ace Chemicals. That's where we'll find Scarecrow. Impossible. I've had a team there ever since the evacuation started, just like you asked. Crane must have bought them off. Or worse. For the first time early on in the story, he manages to get an uncontaminated sample of the fear toxin, which is necessary for him to trace it in the first place. Check the chemical analysis I've just uploaded. Sure. Is this what I think it is? Scarecrow's new toxin. An uncontaminated sample. The reaction emits a unique radiation spike. Run a scan of the city for this energy signature. It will show where Scarecrow is creating his fear toxin. That's another thing too. Batman would have to check every Ace Chemicals location, or any chemical factory for that matter, in order to find Crane. But why do that when Batman can do what he did in the game, which was to look for Scarecrow and find any clues he can in the process? He did exactly that. Found an uncontaminated sample and tracked down the location of the fear toxin. That's what a good detective would do. The Joker being here is an overcomplicated way to disguise the fact that both the main villains are as interesting as drywall and have about as much motivation to destroy the city and kill Batman too. Scarecrow went from being his usual sniveling one-note self to being an unusual one-note self. I am in complete control. Uh, yep. Batman beats up his enemies. Don't know what this is meant to prove or how this undermines Scarecrow as a character. I mean, the Joker is intimidating and compelling in The Dark Knight, but guess what happens a lot in that movie? And you're gonna love me. He missed! Would you please just give me a minute? <laughs> Instead of just being a weird henchman who gets off on the concept of fear, he suddenly decides he wants to be the god king of the world and flood the country with his fear gas. 
Yeah, because Scarecrow is addicted to the power that fear grants him over people. It's almost like that lines up with what he was doing in Arkham Asylum. And he wants to tear down the image of Batman and ruin his life. Because from Scarecrow's perspective, Batman literally did that to Scarecrow for many years. What do you think locking him away repeatedly would have done for his image and his life? Also, Batman uses fear to control Gotham City, something Scarecrow wants for himself. Of course Scarecrow would want to destroy his image and make him look like a fraud. Alfred, who do you see when you look at me? The boy whose shoes you used to tie every morning? The teenager you drove to his first date? While you are here every night, I am out there. The only thing between the innocent you and the may predator. Be. No, not what? may be. I am. When the mugger or the thief stops to think twice, that is fear. That is what I am. That is why they hired assassins, because I am the reason the criminals breathe easier when the sun rises. It's like Batman stole his whole gimmick and turned it against him. And he wants to destroy Gotham. Yes, he wants to destroy the city that Batman has given everything to fight for. And he wants to be the ruler of Gotham. After he destroys it, I guess. He's not literally blowing Gotham to smithereens. He's poisoning the entire city to destroy it. He has them engulfed in fear toxin. That's how he controls them. Three billion to take Gotham. Talk about overkill. This isn't about Gotham. It's about Batman. All this because his face got mangled by Killer Croc one time. Scarecrow doesn't care about his face. They imply he even used that to enhance his own gimmick. He's done something to his face, hasn't he? Looks like he's taken a knife and cut chunks out of it. Rumor is he got his face torn off by some freak called Killer Croc. Really? Looks deliberate to me. Yeah, well, I guess he figured he should look the part. You know, like a scarecrow. I mean, if it was a simple revenge plot, you'd think he'd be more angry at Croc than, say, everyone else? It's not just a simple revenge plot. I already went over this earlier, so I won't repeat myself. What the hell did Scarecrow have to gain from pretending to refrigerator Barbara Gordon? He literally explains it in that scene. You will bring death to all who follow you. He wants to make that point to Batman, that he's the hero who failed. I'm going to rob them of hope. As they stare into your eyes, they will blame you. Failure will have a face and a name. A legend laid bare. Powerless. Human. Afraid. How the hell did he know the fear toxin would make it look like she killed herself anyway? Because Batman can still hear Scarecrow in his hallucination, and Scarecrow knows that Batman is seeing Barbara under fear toxin. Here comes the toxin. I can practically taste it. Yes, you see it now. The horror behind the glass. The monster that will be your end. Unless you pick up that gun and deny him. Don't listen! I mean, Scarecrow literally put the gun there as a setup. He's able to manipulate what Batman sees by using the environment, or his words to mislead Batman about what will happen to Barbara. How the hell does he know what specifically Batman would be hallucinating from the fear toxin? Scarecrow is in control of several factors as I've explained earlier. He front-loaded by putting the real Barbara in the room to put her in Bruce's mind, and made it clear that he was planning to kill her. Bruce would have to be thinking of Barbara since Scarecrow knows he's afraid of her dying. It was a really bad idea to imply that the Justice League exists in this universe because even if Batman loses, Superman or The Flash will probably end up taking down Scarecrow anyway, so his lording over the ruins of Gotham won't last long. Batman would still have his identity exposed and the Eastern Seaboard would be engulfed in fear toxin. Let's take a moment to really run through Scarecrow's plan, shall we? He'll produce enough fear gas in the Ace Chemicals plant to destroy the city which is now totally vacant, save for his own soldiers and whichever random criminals decide to stick around. I've just run a simulation based on the mixing chamber capacity. He's not bluffing, Bruce. I guess now we know why he evacuated the city. He needed control of the plant. Only Ace Chemicals has the facilities to build a bomb of this size. The fallout will be huge. We played right into his hands. He didn't care if everyone ran. He knew that no one would be able to escape the blast radius. Really, the only people who don't deserve getting gassed are the cops. One police station worth of people a world domination plan does not make, buddy. He knew that no one would be able to escape the blast radius. So after this inevitably fails miserably, the game starts telling you of his evil, dastardly plan to use a device to blanket the city in fear gas. But this was just like, a backup plan? 
What if Batman hadn't destroyed the Ace Chemicals building? Would they just not even use the Cloudburst? Yes, because there's no need for a backup plan if the original plan succeeded. I guess I appreciate that Johnny C over here is being proactive and thinking ahead, but the narrative seems to play it off like this was his plan all along. So was he just hoping the Ace Chemicals thing would fall through and wasted all that time setting that up for nothing? It's a backup plan. Scarecrow attempts to blow the Ace Chemicals building and have Batman come and stop him. But while he's doing this, across town in the district that's already controlled by Arkham Knight's militia, activate the Cloudburst and Batman can't do shit to stop it. The Cloudburst is on Stag's airship. He'd have to set up the Cloudburst, mix it in with the Fear Toxin, then ship the vehicle used to carry out the Cloudburst. That's very time consuming, and the evacuation was used to grant him control over the city. You can't just do the Cloudburst plan without having gained control over the city. He needed to do that to even carry out the Ace Chemicals plan to begin with. Even better, protect that island with all the tanks you have, so that the Batmobile would get annihilated if it set even one wheel on the bridge. Placing all the tanks you have in one area is a pretty bad idea, one that rings similar to sending all of your police force into the sewers. And regardless, there were plenty of tanks protecting Ace Chemicals. It was already fairly crowded on its own, so you'd imagine how problematic it would be if they were just bunched up together, increasing the risk of them shooting each other or a chain reaction taking place if even one of them is blown up next to the others. Scarecrow and Arkham Knight, the person, not the game, are both ultimately undone by their obsession with stupid theatrics. Scarecrow being obsessed with theatrics is a part of his character. They have all these resources at the ready, and they continue waiting to use any of them until after Batman just got done trashing the last round of new tricks up their sleeve. They're not trying to kill Batman, they're trying to delay him. In death, he has nothing left to fear. Keep him away from Ace Chemicals. Your vengeance will come. I could have ended it right there! We have not broken him yet. It will come. Now I've waited long enough. Batman dies. Tonight. Why do you hate him so much? You can never understand. Your revenge is at hand. This is his last night. I'll make sure of it. And just so we're both on the same page here, I fully, fully intend to kill you. But first, we're gonna make you suffer. Arkham Knight also wants Batman and his best once he's convinced into Scarecrow's plan of drawing this out to bring Batman more pain. And another reason why they'd want to have Batman at his best is so Batman can be the hero who failed. If Batman can't even save his city while he's at his best throughout the night, then that would only hammer in Scarecrow's point about how Batman is a fraud and how he's the hero who can't save Gotham. If they just threw everything at him at once, he wouldn't have any time to adapt and the game would be over in an hour. Almost like that plays into both of them being overconfident that they're going to win. That's what I like about you. Predictable. And that's why we're gonna win. We know your move before you do. We know how you think! And again, you don't throw everything you have at someone you want to suffer. You draw this out for some time. Who fucking cares if Gotham sees Batman fail? Or if his crusade is ruined? Scarecrow does. Everyone's been evacuated and the only people who would see it up close are criminals who are minutes away from biting their own tongues out because you dropped super LSD on them. Scarecrow has video cameras. As I tear your mind apart, Gotham will watch. I will cut that mask from your face and the whole world will see the fear in your eyes. Jason is a dumbass who does nothing the whole game except talk about how he'll eventually do things, but then just kind of not get around to it. He's getting around to it in the scene being shown right now. So according to this game's universe, Jason was kidnapped by the Joker and taken to an old abandoned wing of Arkham Asylum to be tortured for months before being fake killed. For some reason, Batman's having flashbacks to events he wasn't even there for! Joker recorded said events. We even see this in the flashbacks themselves. Joker sent me the film. I saw him kill you. A regular dynamic duo! Just like Bats and that new kid of his. No, oh, you wouldn't. You think? So, this isn't Batman then? This scene implies that he had assumed Jason was dead by this point already, and got a new Robin. No, the Matter of Family DLC takes place months after Jason died. 
Batman didn't replace Jason immediately, and he did look for Jason, he just didn't find him. Which means he's imagining a scenario where he thought Jason was dead, but knew he wasn't by virtue of having this flashback at all? The flashback takes place before Joker faked his death. And he still can't figure out who the Arkham Knight is? Why would a dead person be your assumption of who the Arkham Knight is? So then we're treated to a death scene for Jason, in which he's shot in a video that Batman watches and then never follows up on out of plot convenience. There's nothing that states he never followed up on it. You mean to tell me that Batman never went looking for Jason and just took the video as evidence enough that he was a goner? Why would the default assumption be that Batman didn't look for Jason, when the logical one would be that he tried but never found him? Instead of dying right off, Jason was tortured for months and mentally programmed to hate Batman, I guess. My name is Jason Todd. Who do you hate? Batman. Instead of use this for something and say, turn Jason into a Joker sidekick to hurt Batman's feelings, Mr. J shoots him in the shadowed region and then does a classic Joker sign off. The Joker made Jason hate Batman and be okay with killing off an entire city. That's huge. Did Joker just miss and assume this was a kill shot before leaving to go do other stuff? Did he actually plan to fake Jason's death? Yes. How did Jason get out of this situation and go scour the earth for a four billion dollar anti-Batman army? Where did he get that money? So here's what I don't get. That guy shows up out of nowhere and stumbles an army this size. He must be rich with his money, right? Because I never heard of him. It's not his money. Every super villain around is chipping in on this one. It's all part of Scarecrow's plan. Yeah, the night took him for every penny they had. How'd he convince them? Beats me. But he was convincing enough to get a three billion dollar army. Three billion to take Gotham? <laughs> Talk about overkill. This isn't about Gotham. It's about Batman. The appeal of Red Hood is that he represents the flaws in Batman's philosophy, and is one of the few characters in the DC Universe who can make a legitimate argument against Batman. The fact that Batman never killed the Joker, or anyone for that matter, is kind of shocking when you find out his adopted son was tortured and beaten to death to prove a point. Jason Todd has every right to be angry that the Joker is still walking the streets and killing people on a daily basis, because it shows less of a moral integrity in Batman and more of just a weakness that anyone could exploit. His fear of crossing the line goes from being noble and heroic to more of a character flaw. But nah, that's too interesting. Jason should just be mad at him. Jason isn't just mad at Batman, he lays out several reasons why. How long did you wait before replacing me, huh? A month? A week? I trusted you! And you just left me to die! That's not what happened. How long before you stopped searching for me, hmm? How long before you gave up? I was just a kid. You turned me into a soldier, sent me to war. Did you even look for me? Or did you just look for a replacement? You left me to rot in that abandoned wing of Arkham for over a year! With him. Hey look, that's a great opportunity to kill Batman! Or wait, never mind, he's just gonna listen to Scarecrow and give up for no reason. It says, System Override, that wasn't in his control. And Scarecrow talks him into sticking with the plan, which Jason later warms up to because of his hatred for Batman. And just so we're both on the same page here, I fully, fully intend to kill you. But first, we're gonna make you suffer. Okay, this is an even better situation. Batman's got a bullet in his abdomen, he's on the ground helpless, he's surrounded by 500 armed men. Just empty that pistol into his jaw and spray his face all over the back of his cowl. Again, Scarecrow and Arkham Knight are not trying to kill him. This gunshot is something Jason knows Batman's armor can tank. This is like punching someone in the gut rather than a killer blow. What about now when you have two guns pointed out? Ah, oh, forget it. Jason is trying to get his last words in. He's not gonna cut himself off and shoot Batman. That probably wouldn't even work since Batman would just block that with his armor or drop a smoke pellet and leave. In a world where pretty much everyone thinks Batman killed the Joker, not everyone thinks this, Jason's character doesn't have much of a leg to stand on. And it's made even worse when he tries to explain his anger and only comes off as sounding like an idiot. You had so many chances to kill him. It's your fault Joker got to me! Jason said that Batman had so many chances to kill Joker. His problem is that Batman didn't do it before Jason died, in spite of having opportunities. Every good argument he could make is gone. What about the fact that Batman is willing to bring young people in his war against crime? 
Isn't that something Batman struggles with in this very game? You know, this is what happens when you bring your friends into this crazy little game of ours? I was just a kid! You turned me into a soldier! Sent me to war! He is totally fine with killing thousands of people and allying himself with a faceless terrorist. Yeah, because Jason was conditioned to hate Batman by the Joker, and he was completely broken by the torture he faced for over a year. Anything Batman taught him about morality is not going to be important to Jason anymore. He doesn't even think that connection they had earlier was real. Stop! Stop talking to me! They made him a whiny teen brat who turns evil, wears a clunky robot suit, hates his old mentor for no reason, and hangs out with a hooded figure with a deformed face. Oh my god. He's Anakin Skywalker in Episode 3! This really does have the writing of a Star Wars prequel. No it doesn't. Not even Grant Paulson will agree with that. Okay, we've established that the villains make no sense and are complete idiots, but let's talk about the dumbest one of the bunch. It's Batman. He's the dumbest villain. For whatever reason, this game forces him to make every wrong decision imaginable. And it's not done in a way that shows Batman's humanity and vulnerability, he's just acting like an asshole. I think all things considered, Tim Drake probably hates his guts after everything that happened. Batman just got a flashback to Jason dying, now he's just expected to be okay with letting the next Robin run out on his own? One of the strange things Batman seems to be doing all night is telling everyone how dire the situation is and how this will be the last time they meet after he helps with their side mission. This is the end. This is the last time we meet. Don't talk like that. It means this is the end, Selina. It means we can. I will see you again, right? No one will. But I can't help but ask, why the hell does Batman think tonight's the night when it all goes up in flames? I mean, Arkham Knight and Scarecrow are kind of bad at their job and he doesn't exactly seem to be showing a ton of symptoms of turning into Bat Joker other than the eye color. The fear toxin is making him think he's going to become the Joker. He literally prepares a fifth cell just in case he has the disease. This isn't out of a vacuum because he literally has the same fear in Arkham City. So if Batman is infected with fear toxin and is worried about becoming the Joker at any moment, then yes, it makes sense that Batman thinks that this will be his last night, at least for a long, long time. This is the worst ending to a game since Mass Effect 3. I know that's a bold statement, but I'll stick to it. After Batman succeeds in taking down pretty much everything in his path, as per his custom, the thrilling climax to World of Tanks Batman Edition is that Scarecrow is by himself in a room with a gun and two hostages. Um... Okay... This is Batman we're talking about. I'm not one of those guys who overhypes Batman to death and says he can beat anybody ever, but this is one of the times where I feel like he could probably handle it. There's a storage depot in Kingston. Go there, alone, or your friends will die. Dick. Scarecrow has Batman go to this shady-ass warehouse and leave behind his utility belt under threat of executing Jim and Tim. Batman doesn't need his utility belt to get out of rough situations, it just helps. The suit is filled to burst with lockpicks and secret components and pockets. These clips aren't from the Arkham games. Not to mention probably a dozen types of tracking devices to let Alfred, Nightwing, and Robin know where he is. Jason picks up on this and saves him. What's Alfred gonna do? Use a golf club? Robin is captured, Nightwing is busy in Bloodhaven under Batman's orders. So forget all that, the utility belt makes the man. Without it, he is nothing. But you just said that the belt still helps Batman, even if he doesn't need it. Scarecrow wants him to take the belt off so it doesn't help him. That's the point. Batman has a long, weird spirit journey in the back of the truck, and by the time he gets to the ruins of Arkham Asylum, all that's left to oppose him is Scarecrow holding a gun. While Batman is under restraints, sure, he can break out eventually, but not fast enough to stop a speeding bullet. Batman surely wasn't fast enough to stop Joker from shooting this dart at Gordon. No! Batman isn't a speedster. In the middle of this hazy transition, Batman had to consciously let Scarecrow strap him to a gurney while he's holding a gun in one hand and a glove of syringes in the other. As far as Batman knows, Scarecrow has goons pointing guns at Tim and Jim while Scarecrow is transporting him. Breaking out would result in their deaths. Someone please, for the love of God, explain this to me. 
Oh, the humanity! If only Batman was some kind of expert escape artist and could figure out a dozen ways to break his mighty bonds. Notice how when Bruce is escaping in that clip, it's still not fast enough to prevent someone from pulling a trigger. If only he had some kind of special move to swipe Scarecrow's gun away and take him down in one swift motion! This move doesn't work if you don't get the drop on someone. Scarecrow is actively prepared for Batman by having him on literal restraints. He would shoot Tim or Jim before Batman would be able to escape. This ending makes Batman just flat out give up and let a B-list villain destroy him. He knew Jason was following him, and yes, Batman would give up his identity or his life if it meant saving Jim or Tim two people he loves. Why wouldn't he? Do you know why he gives up? It's not for any good reason. It's because Rocksteady was tired of making Batman games. Or because Batman cares about his loved ones. The Dark Knight movie series did something similar, but they didn't have all the characters become dangerously incompetent to create this situation. Well, guess that's the discussion for another time. They just built a wall around Batman's main character powers and let it fade out more naturally. I'm not saying you can't tell a story where Batman effectively ends, they've done that a few times actually, I'm saying you can't do it in such an insulting way. I feel like Arkham Knight was very respectful about it. Batman didn't quit like he did in The Dark Knight Rises, he changed his identity to find a way to keep his family safe, but also continue his fight against crime and corruption. He did both. Batman succumbs to his weird mind trip with the Joker for a bit and soon figures out a way to overpower his personal boogeyman. Cool, fine, whatever. Where the hell are any of his friends? Nightwings in Bloodhaven, Catwoman has no means of tracking Batman, Jason did get involved. So instead of the logical option, we get Jason Todd swooping in to save the day a whole five minutes too late. Why the fuck did he even bother coming back here? Him and Batman never really made amends, he just beat him up and said sorry. I'm sorry. That was enough for Jason to pull a complete 180 and go save him? That's not all Batman said. Jason, I can help you. <laughs> There's no helping me! Joker got to you. I know what it's like. Don't pretend to understand! You're Robin, Jason. You're not what he made you. I'm sorry. It's not too late. We can fix this. Together. Batman had the choice to hurt Jason and imprison him immediately, or to help him and let him know that he's being heard. Jason believes that Batman only used him for his war against crime and saw him as easily replaceable. If that's the case, then Batman wouldn't reach out to Jason like this, while he already has a Robin. Batman would have just beaten him up and took the easy way out, instead of trying to reach Jason. That's not what happened though, and Jason had the time to process this. Man, if only his problems were always solved this easily. Hell, he could just go up to Two-Face and apologize for mangling both halves of his head and Harvey would return to a life of politics. That doesn't address Two-Face's core motivations or beliefs, so this wouldn't change him, unlike Batman's conversation with Jason, where those are brought to the forefront. Now, with that being said, is Arkham Origins actually that bad? Now that I think about it, that one had some neat stuff in it despite being kind of cheaply made. Shit, I'm gonna go fucking play that one again. Have fun with frame rate drops, I'm gonna go play Arkham Knight.